Hey guys, this video is going to be the beginning of a short series where I build a basic API with Rails. And the intent here is to kind of be a single place or single app that both hosts the like HTML pages and also an, a, an internal API or external API based on like maybe other apps that want to communicate with your app or, you know, some mobile device or something like that. So t commonly on an iPhone or something, they, those usually talk to some other app somewhere or some hosted application as opposed to just being the one place there that where the data lies that's not always the case but it's a common trend of how apis are kind of more of the convention with that world and with rails you can kind of build this monolith app that has both or you can create a whole separate app it's up to you usually constraining it all to one place is is kind of the convention of the rails world anyway so you'll you'll commonly hear like a building a monolith is more of an approach that might make more sense or just building a Ruby on Rails backed API that has like something like React or Vue.js or something on the front end that takes care of the client side. So you'll you'll have these two separate apps that juggle the data back and forth and then kind of just do their thing separately. But Ruby on Rails is commonly the choice for something like that because of active record. It just makes creating data a breeze in the sense of the database and the, the the DSL language or the domain scripting language to create resources on a given app. So this guide, I want to just essentially walk you through the steps I would take and then some more advanced stuff you can use to format the data that might come back as JSON as opposed to HTML in a typical Rails app. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new Rails app. I'm going to use my templates. It's called Kickoff Tailwind. You don't have to use this. I think it, for me, it's just more or less just habit at this point. It just saves me some time and the scope of adding some gems and configuration to the app. So check it out if you haven't. And I'm going to use, for the subject matter here, I think I'm going to use bands and songs. And it's kind of their, maybe their album names. So maybe we'll have a band that returns, it's like an object that returns the band members and maybe their albums so to speak. So let's say Rails new, let's call it band API. Just kind of just a general idea there. And we could call it, we can use API mode in Rails, or you could basically create one that's solely for both. I'm going to roll with both for now, because we could have a front end on this. I'm not going to go crazy on the JavaScript side, but if you wanted to pass API, you could just do that like this, and it should be set up to do such a thing. Maybe it will do that. So we'll just roll with the API and see what happens. So let's go with that. I'm trying to think if I should even deal with a template at that point. I don't think I'm going to. So let's just do that. Rails basic vanilla app that's API mode and we'll install that. Okay, so with the API mode, that pretty much assumes you're not going to install too much in the assets. So that means JavaScript doesn't exist in this world views don't really exist there is a view that you can mount like a uh, vanilla javascript app to yeah actually we do have some some channels and stuff for web sockets but that's just essentially how that's going to work we could add stuff as we go so i'll just ls i'm going to find cd band api and let's just check it out in vs code so in an api based app you're going to have a little bit different construct the main thing to note is the controller layer inherits from an action controller API class. So it's no longer application controller. So that's more of the Rails convention initially. And then we don't have any of the, the basic views. Like it's all just basic mailers and stuff in here. So nothing really to be concerned about from the view level. So the representation here is assuming you're going to be using some sort of JavaScript engine or something on the front end to return stuff back. So I'm going to generate a scaffold called band and within it, it's going to come back some, just some basic stuff. So we're going to get our routing for our controller, our, our routing, I should say, and our model. So the, if you do a scaffold in API mode, no views or assets are added. It's going to return JSON by default. So if you see on a typical Rails app, this will like return a format and this will all just be built, built in. So in the response, I believe it's just going to return. If you go to a certain URL, we'll be able to see that JSON based on, I believe, a gem that is installed, not JBuilder. 
Yeah, we basically have almost nothing in this app, so that's okay. Rails will just return JSON. So let's, let's migrate that data, okay? And I just want to boot up the app and see what happens. So it's not going to really do much because we don't have any views, but we can go and go to the routing. And we have resources, bands, really don't need a root route. So I can just go to directly to uh, localhost bands. Nothing's going to come back, but you'll notice that the response is JSON format. So we're basically just going to return JSON in our browser. It's not going to be anything to view. So why don't we create some bands? Uh, I'll do that Rails console. And we could say band.create. These are literally off the top of my head. I'm not, I'm pretty much recording this in real time. So let's say, I don't know, CDC. There is one band.create name. Rolling Stones, band.create Led Zeppelin. I think that's how you spell it. I should know that. And maybe one more. What's another good band? The Beatles. Bands I feel like everyone's heard of. Okay. There is four bands. Let's go with five. So one more. Guns and Roses. I don't know. Not really a favorite, but. I feel like people have heard of it. I don't know if the N is capitalized or not. Whatever. Okay. Bands are created. Cool. That should be great. We've got data coming back now. That's just literally how it's going to work. And you could return JSON in different formats there. So if you don't want to return and create it at, for instance, I believe you can modify how that's returned. So with our data coming back, we now have a essentially just dump of all the data that is in our database around the band. And what's nice is that's basically just available by default. But if you want to manipulate this data, it gets a little tricky and you can come back and just return certain bits of data that you might need for a simple API. But a common convention is to use a specification for building APIs. This is more of a choice that you might take at a team level to return JSON in a certain format, a certain pattern. An example response might be here of like a blog post with articles returns certain data in a certain fashion. So if the article's got pagination, you'd see that stuff here. The set data on the articles is like the actual title any relationships involved. So in that case, an author or comments, actual links to those. And then you can actually include the data itself. So included represents the block of actual data on the type of stuff associated with maybe the comments or whatnot. And it's kind of neat how it works and a way to extend this and use it in a Rails app at least the method I've heard about in the community is active model serializers. So it's essentially an, a serializer pattern that allows you to return JSON in a certain format as opposed to something that's just stock in Rails. We're rendering all of our data at this point. We've got everything dumping. So everything included in the object is going to be the ID, the name, created at, updated at. And that's useful. I don't know that we need the timestamps so much. And uh, we probably want to modify those if we did. So we could return only certain elements in this case. So you could say name and it would return the name of the bands only. So that's pretty useful. So we can also come back and render. We need to add another resource. So if we say Rails generate, let's see, member we'll say and references and we'll say name pretty much the same so like that that'll give us our model let's run rails db migrate and then in our models we'll have member it's going to say belongs to band band will have many members so we can save that down and essentially it's all nothing can change here but we can go back to that API that's returning, I believe we can include members. Okay, so if we create a member now, if we'll go Rails console and I'll do member.create. Well, let's see who is the first band. AC, let's just say Angus Young. We need to pass name and we'll say 
band ID one because Angus Young was in ACDC, which is the first band we created, should have the ID of one. We set that and let's see what comes back in. Okay, so we've got our association set up. I'm returning just the bands at this point, but I know we do have the members. So if we go to members, I need to add the routing, I think. So routes, bands, members, basically that. So it'd be bands, one, members, something like so. Band ID, members, member ID, one. I know I just created a member, but for now, what I want to do is set up active uh, model serializers, which is a third party gem that's going to allow us to contort the JSON that comes back as opposed to kind of trying to do it. Uh, built-in stuff with Rails. And since we are in API mode using JBuilder, which is another way to approach rendering JSON, is a little out of the question because we don't have the view portion intact. So that's, I mean, that's okay. You don't have to worry about it too much, but now we need to leverage a gem for that. And it's a little involved, but it's not too bad. So it's gonna come with some generators, which will create a new active model serializer. I can't say that. And just kind of go from there. So we'll say, I'm going to go to Ruby gems, Ruby gems, active model serializer. If I can spell serial, there we go. And it's a pretty popular gem for just returning formatted JSON in a way you, you basically would want. And its approach is object oriented. So it's a much like how models work already in your database and or in your app. So let's add this to our gem file real quick. So I'll go just, I mean, honestly, anywhere. Just throw it here and run bundle. Okay, so it's going to come back with some stuff that it's going to use. And the way this can work is running some dependent serializers now if you just run rails you should have a new generator option let's check it out should have it somewhere maybe we don't okay rails generate let's run that first and see what we can generate okay now we've got more serializer so we've got one now so i'm going to run that and it's going to just mimic what we've had so rails generate serializer and just go from there and we can add stuff to the app in that way. So it's going to create a new folder in our model or in our app directory called serializer. We'll have band serializer and it's going to default to just including the ID and I'll include name too. So I'll save that down. If we go back, that's going to just basically inherit from what we're working with on the model. So now if we go to our controller, I'll just show you by example, we're just rendering bands um, and band itself. So if we go back, I believe this should change. We need to boot the server up. I don't know if it'll change on the index, but it will on the show page. Yeah, there we go. So now we got the ID and the name returning because we're inheriting that serializer action. And since I just added the member class, we can do the same cool thing we do in models in the serializers, but we need to create the serializer for member first. So let's do that. A new window here, I'll kill this one. So Rails generate serializer, and we'll call it member, and we'll just go with that. I think you could pass attributes there if you want as well, up to you. So again, ID here and name here. And what we can do is have band serializer has many members. And let's see what that does. There we go. So now it's returning JSON in a rich way. That's going to essentially have an object, a subchild object that's called members. And in it, since we created one in the past, I created a new record that's Angus Young associated to this ID. So let's create a few more members and go from there. I don't believe you need to have the longs to here, but we can go and do that anyway. So you can build in those associations. So maybe we'll have on um, Rails create. Remember create. I know Malcolm isn't alive, RIP, but I'm going to add him anyway. 
and maybe for uh, the Beatles, let's add, I don't know, John Lennon, also not alive, RIP. What band was he in for? I, obviously, I knew he was in Beatles, but the ID I'm thinking of. So John Lennon there. And then we could say Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. I think it's two R's. Could be wrong. Don't sue me. George Harrison. Okay. Guns N' Roses. I'm going to just put slash. And I think that was five. Yeah. And what we got? Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger. Is it Mick? Is it two? Yeah. Keith Richards. I'm just adding a few per band. Obviously, it's not everyone. I don't want this to take up too much time. Okay, I think that might be wrong, but yeah, here we go. Two. And let's say Zeppelin will just have Robert Plant. I think it's three. Jimmy Page. John Bonham. I'm blanking on the bass player right now. John. Paul Jones. I think I spelled Bonham up there wrong too. Again, don't sue me. But now if we return that data, we should see a lot more people involved, which is sweet. Another cool thing about this gym is the way you can return JSON. There's different approaches and one is called JSON API. So that's kind of a spec. So JSON API. And Essentially, this is just a, a way, a format you can return the JSON in a certain format that might make sense for team-wide stuff. So if you can all agree on a format, this is just kind of a, a truth or a source of truth. So if we return this in a certain way, uh, this actually has a configuration that allows you to do such a thing. I believe, I'm not sure if there's a guide for doing that. I know there's a configuration to adding this. I don't know where it is though. Let's just read this. There we go. Bundle. Here's more about it. If we want to use the JSON API, there's an adapter for that. We can add it to a config in our initializers directory. So why don't, why don't I do that just to show you by example. If you go and add initializer, maybe we'll call it active model serial. Doesn't really matter. And you could just say this, it's essentially pass that in. And that'll auto load when you boot up your app. So we just need to restart the server. And go back. Now if we go back to our app, see it comes back as this this format now, which is cool. You didn't have to do anything. So now I've got this this spec essentially in your arsenal if you want to go back and render things a certain way that might make sense to your team. That's kind of just a, a set way that they can expect going forward. I don't know if it, I love this simply because you have to like go way about down the object train to find the data you're looking for, but it's still pretty cool that it's like a spec and just kind of a place that is centralized to your app. So I'll probably actually bypass this and remove this file for now. I don't think I'll make use of it, but that's essentially the, the beginning stages of setting this up. The active model serializers are make this a godsend. So if you were to do this in Rails yourself and you're not on an API based app, you would either need to leverage JBuilder, which I can cover in another, maybe another app, which is essentially when you create a JBuilder, if you've ever scaffolded anything that comes stock with your a new Rails resource. So if you see dot a file called jbuilder at the end that's kind of returning json by default and rails is smart enough to know to do that by itself so this hooks into that flow and just kind of manipulates what you want to return when you want to return it so it's kind of a neat thing so you can even go you know have complex relationships with these which is why i think a lot of people advocate going this route this has many and belongs to pattern just kind of takes care of it all as opposed to you need to type it all out and rendering it in your JBuilder stuff. But yeah, very powerful. I hope this was a, a decent enough introduction to API, getting the JSON returned. 
In the next video, I'm going to start building the routing for basic API. So you'll see that coming up. So I'll see you in it.